Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'll be teaching you how to edit concert photos in Adobe Lightroom. Uh, here I have a couple of photos of Post Malone from the NXNE festival in Toronto last June. If you guys were wondering how I got such nice shots and how it got to the very front, get this video to 300 likes and I'll be teaching you how to get a press pass for these concerts and festivals. And yeah, with that being said, let's just get into it. Before I get started, I recommend that you shoot in RAW uh, whenever you go to concert or festival or whatever performance, especially if it's at night because you have a lot more to work with and it's easier to edit. Yeah, but besides that, I think it's really easy to edit concert photos because there's a lot of colors and good lighting because obviously the set has a lot of lighting and a lot of colors and they have fog machines and stuff like that. Depending on the venue and depending on how big the artist is, there may be different props and all that sort of stuff, but there is always great lighting and some sort of of, you know color to it so i think that you can really manipulate the colors and change them up it doesn't have to look like the original at all so what this will allow you to do is basically mess with the highlights and shadows and mess with the hsl the hue saturation and luminance so yeah it should be really easy to follow along and you can really experiment a lot with these type of photos so here i have a photo right here and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to change the temperature and see what temperature works best for me usually what i do is i change the temperature until there's two colors that i can see like obviously this is red and like purple but i want distinct colors like i want blue and red or orange and green right i want something that contrasts between each other so if i just move the temperature towards the blue you can see it's more of a purple and it's more of a red over here it's like they're sort of similar which i don't want so i'll be moving it slightly not too much because if i move it too too much on the left right here you can see the skin tones kind of get too blue which is not good obviously the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the contrast and I'm going to lower the blacks. The reason why I'm going to do this is because it creates contrast between the background and the subject and the colors get darker and you can see the colors more distinctly. And so that's how you create the illusion of depth in the background, which makes it look a lot better. Uh, I'm going to increase the shadows a bit so that you can kind of get a look at the middle because if you decrease it right here, the middle is like complete black, which you don't want. You want to see some details. Also with concert photos and anything in the dark, it's usually hard to get a really sharp image in the dark, obviously, especially when the object is moving so you probably know that you know artists perform and it's really hard especially in the night where, where your iso is high so decreasing the blacks and increasing the contrast might hide some of those details that you don't want some of the grain that you probably don't want as well so i think it's really good that you do that what you also may want to do is increase the highlights because there is a lot of light in the background it might look good it really depends on your shot for this instance i don't think it will work because his shirt is white and if i increase the highlights his shirt will get really bright too which i don't want so i'll just be keeping it around this right here and i'll also be decreasing the vibrance and saturation the reason why i want to do this is because a lot of times the set lights and you know the colors will change the subject's skin tones to you know the color that it is so in this case the lighting is you know purple and his face is purple over here we want the skin tones to be a little bit more natural and not so you know colorful because you know obviously that's not realistic and it doesn't really look good so you can just lower the vibrance to a point where it looks kind of normal it's still slightly purple but it looks normal and you can tell that it's a person now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to curves here and i'm gonna crush the blacks meaning i'm gonna kind of create this fade effect right here so you'll see it'll get a little bit like you know it's a fade i think it's really good because it kind of levels out the blacks and the shadows that i you know that were really harsh in the beginning but now they look a little bit better and we're just gonna lower this a bit so that the highlights aren't so bright something like that and maybe drop this down and for clarity over here i only recommend lowering the clarity in a couple of scenarios really the only scenario you should be decreasing the clarity is if you want to create some sort of foggy look to it so if there is fog in the background and the artist is like walking through it and there's like light going through the fog you might want to lower the clarity because it'll give a really dreamy type look or maybe that's your style and you want to lower the clarity that's fine but usually because it's really hard to capture detail uh, you might want to increase the clarity it might look a bit better so here's with and without clarity can see it's really preference i think that if you have a really really close up shot you would want to increase the clarity here it's kind of far but it lacks a lot of detail because i did hide some of the imperfections with the blacks and the shadows but to give it some structure to the image i will increase the clarity for this instance not by a lot just four but you can tell the difference now we're going to go to the hsl i mentioned this before this is going to be really big because we're going to change a lot of the colors it's going to give it a totally different feel um so the first thing i'm going to do is change the red see how it looks like because red is one of the two dominant colors 
colors in this whole picture. Red in this like bluish color. So we can move it right or left. I think I'm going to go with a pinkish look just because it's closer to red and it might not totally change the image, but you'll see the subtle differences. And now I'm going to change this purple look. I think yeah, it's purple. I'm going to change the magenta to magenta is like around this as well. I think if you move it closer to the left, it isn't as strong, which is good because here it doesn't look as good. The biggest reason I want to change the colors is because I really don't like photos that have just one solid color. I think two colors look a lot better, it creates depth in the background. It looks really nice. It fits lighting scenarios better. It just makes it overall better picture. Uh, one color that just like totally red like this doesn't look as good as like something like this. I'm not done yet, so it isn't at you know final form yet. But really, I think that if there's two colors that complement each other, it looks much better than just one color standing alone, right? So we're going to adjust this slightly toward the middle left right here. Not too strong because if you do put it to the left side and make it really strong, the skin tones kind of change. I want to keep it kind of the same. And then we're going to go to saturation. We're going to increase the red. We want it visible because obviously we want the, you know, colorful stuff visible but if it did affect the skin tones i wouldn't increase the saturation just because it wouldn't look good if you would increase the saturation of a skin tone it'd make it look very fake but in this instance this does not affect the skin tones at all it just affects the pink color over here which you know you want to stand out and we're going to change the purple over here this affects the skin tones over here so we're going to lower it a bit so negative nine and i think magenta probably changes it no magenta doesn't uh i think probably blue would change it yeah blue so i'm going to increase the blue over here and probably aqua as well i don't think anything else changes anything because there's really only two colors here and for luminance i think this will help with the skin tones so if you go to purple and you increase it it kind of brightens up the face it makes it look more realistic but in this case i think it's a little bit too desaturated so i'll increase the purple a bit and if it comes to the point where the skin tones are just way too off you can just turn back the temperature to the left a bit so something like that i think this looks a bit more realistic and i'm gonna lower the highlights because you can't really see the details on the shirt so something like this would be good right this was before and this is after now you can see the details in the shirt this usually is a problem when people have white shirts on i know you can use the adjustment brush and you can adjust that next thing we're going to do we're going to go to luminance increase the red increase the magenta yeah magenta also affects the face as well i think it looks good like that and then change the blue as well actually no blue doesn't look that good i think you want one really bright one one kind of darker once again it's contrast you want opposites they look better that way now for split toning i think shadows really change the look of like everything change the mood of it all at once by changing the shadows and you don't want it too strong i'll increase the saturation a bit like right here i'm going to select like some sort of blue purplish look so that it kind of fits in with both of these colors if i were to do red right like full red, full on red it wouldn't look that good so i'm gonna select the purple over here something like that and i usually don't mess with highlights especially if there's a lot of white in the photos because it'll turn out really weird like that really that's up to you you can lower the saturation if you just want a really small effect but you can change that for yourself if you don't have white in your photo now for detail you can remove some noise reduction but with the steps i took in the you know beginning where i lower the blacks i increase the contrast and all that sort of stuff i think most of the noise would be removed already and you won't be able to see it but if you really want that you can increase the luminance and now for lens corrections i think this plays a really big role into the look of this picture just because it makes it look a bit wider and i think wide shots look amazing it doesn't really make it wider per se but there's kind of an illusion that this is the main subject it kind of distorts everything and it pinches it toward the middle so you can see here if we increase it it kind of you know pinch everything to the sides if i didn't press constraint crop you can see what it does right but yeah so basically this makes it a bit wider or the illusion of wider so if we press on here and then we press on this you can see it distorts this right here this used to be like straight but if you go back right here this is sort of normal right it's like it's like a rectangle and now the last thing i do is add some vignetting what vignetting does is it hides some unnecessary things and also gives a really cool vintage look sort of so what i mean by unnecessary things i'm meaning some noise you know you don't want noise maybe someone's phone um a head the bottom of the stage stuff that you don't really want to be in the picture some things you want to hide or you just want to point focus towards the middle where the subject is so increasing this will Will make it highlight priority so it'll make it brighter on the sides you can see that might look good actually that looks pretty good but usually people decrease it and then there's vignetting and then you can see what that does basically it makes the top and bottom darker you can see um the difference between this and this right sometimes this will look better depends on the situation sometimes this will look better 
And the last thing, it's not really necessary. I think some people prefer this, but you can add some grain. It will make it look a lot more raw, a lot more natural. I think it really gives me that concert feel. So if you increase the grain right here, you probably won't notice it unless you increase it like up to here. I know a lot of photographers to increase their grain um, to give it a more vintage, you know, film look, especially with black and white pictures. So if I were to make this black and white, um, I think the, the grain would look really cool. Now, the good thing about making all these adjustments is that if you have a lot of pictures in the similar lighting scenario, you can just copy everything, maybe except for a uh, crop because you may want to, you know, zoom in on things and stuff like that, but you can copy and then you can paste it on other photos. So here I was testing around with some of them, but you can go back to the original and you can press paste and you can see how that looks like. It looks really nice. So in this instance, I would actually go to lens corrections and I would increase the amount to make it a little bit brighter, but you know, it looks good anyways. And you would decrease it to hide this part, similar to um, how I wanted to hide kind of the speakers over here, because those are not really a necessary part in the photo, but I think this would look cool as well. Really doesn't matter. But yeah, you can see the look of that. We can paste onto this. You know, it looks good on any photos that really are in the same scenario. So I'm just gonna show you a last photo here. This is one of my favorite photos I've taken of the concert or the festival. And let me just paste it and it looks really nice. So I would increase the highlights a little bit. And maybe in this instance, I would lower the clarity just because there's fog in the background. I think this one is really good uh, for lowering the, the clarity just because there is once again fog and light going through it. And it might look better like that, but usually I'd increase the clarity. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you out. If you want more tutorials like this, and if you want a little story about how I got Post Malone to follow me on Twitter, uh, hit the thumbs up button. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one. Oh,